Is there really a real remedy to what has been done? Quite simply, yes. There is one way and one way only you can protect yourself, your family, and your property from this public obligation. Only through an underlying security agreement and filing a UCC-1 financing statement can you gain this standing. Accepting for value your birth certificate and executing a lien upon the governmentally created all capital letters named by you in your proper birth given name as the secured party, and listing anything and everything you own, will own, or possibly ever could own, as collateral in the security agreement, can you effectively and permanently remove yourself from the status of a debtor to that of a creditor, and actually own property, have access to enforceable constitutional rights. By filing a UCC-1 financing statement, you become an actual creditor with standing in law and acquire the ability to stake a claim upon which relief can be granted and not have the fruits of your labor tax simply following up the UCC-1 financing statement with a public notice and declaration depositum declaration, can you, as a creditor, acquire and access actual original jurisdiction constitutional rights that can be enforced. Without a UCC-1 financing statement and the underlying security agreement, everything you have is pledged and owned by the state. You merely are the user of the property and must use that property in strict compliance with all the rules and regulations established by the state. If acquiring actual original jurisdiction constitutional rights and having the ability to own property free from government controls and the ability to earn a living without taxation interests you, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain by executing this document. Only through filing a UCC-1 financing statement and security agreement is it possible for anyone to legally access constitutional rights. To try and break this down even further. Few people truly understand the words, slave and slavery. The biggest benefit in filing a UCCI financing statement is that you will no longer be a slave. The fact is, most dictionaries fail to provide an accurate definition of the words, slave and slavery. Even Webster's 1828 edition of the English Language Dictionary fails in its attempt to define the true meaning of the word slavery, slave, a person who is wholly subject to the will of another. Slavery is not a matter of being totally 100% subject to the will of another. Any person who is to any degree involuntarily subject to the will of another is still a slave. There are no degrees of slavery. The second part of the second definition of slave provided by Webster's 1828 edition is, one who surrenders himself to any power whatsoever, which is closer to the real point. The Uniform Commercial Code governs all commercial transactions in the United States. Any person, including government corporations, agencies, etc., involved in the sales of goods, commercial paper, bank deposits and collections, letters of credit, bulk transfer, warehouse receipts, bills of lading, investment securities, and secure transactions, is governed by the UCC. The a form of the Uniform Commercial Code is adopted by all states. To comply with the Uniform Commercial Code in your state, a UCC-1 financing statement must be filed with the Secretary of State by any person who makes a claim against any other person in the area of commerce. All government agencies operate in commerce and all of them, including the Internal Revenue Service, are private corporations. All courts operate in commerce. All banks operate in commerce. All corporations operate in commerce and all of these entities exist financially because we are their collateral. They borrow on our credit. At one time, our currency was backed by or given substance by gold or silver. It has been thought by many, since the United States took the substance of gold and silver away, that Federal Reserve notes were simply worthless paper, backed by nothing at all. That is not correct. Today, real people, citizens of the several states, you, me, your children, etc., back Federal Reserve notes, much the same way that gold and silver did in the past. In other words, the living, breathing people guarantee or provide the substance for all money that is created. The Federal Reserve Bank clearly states, Federal Reserve notes are backed by the full faith and credit of the American people. Blind faith sets forth that you trust them. Who? None other than the Federal Reserve. Credit means something is due you. The Federal Reserve uses our credit to create all money. All of the money created belongs to the American people and the deceit of the public and private corporations is so complete, they create it charge it to us as a debt and then tack interest to it on top of that. How did the American people become collateral for the debt instruments known as Federal Reserve Notes? 
it was given to the Federal Reserve by a corporation called the United States, the very same corporation that created the Federal Reserve. As discussed previously, in 1933, when President Roosevelt declared a national emergency because the United States could no longer pay its debts. At least that was the spin given to the American people. All of the subsidiary states agreed to support the declared bankruptcy by pledging the energy of their citizens. Their assets consisted only of state citizens. The states in turn used the birth certificates to pledge the state citizen as collateral to keep the government afloat. That is how the American people became collateral for the Federal Reserve notes and so-called debts. The American people became warehouse receipts, like a warehouse full of any type of valuable goods. All of this, however, was a major fraud. Neither the Internal Revenue Service nor any other entity like the government files a UCC-1 financing statement into the commercial registry with the Secretary of State. If they did, they would instantly become subject to all the regulations of the Uniform Commercial Code. The Internal Revenue Service has done very nicely by bluffing and intimidation, as all others mentioned, by operating under public policy where there is in reality no law at all. The state citizen is drawn into commerce when their birth certificate is registered and sent to the Commerce Department in Washington, D.C. This is where the American people become warehouse receipts upon which all of the money printed and circulated is created and guaranteed. In short, the American people became the collateral for all debts. They, the people, allegedly are government and property. Government is a fiction and an artificial person and deals with us as a fiction or artificial person only as stated before. To take this skill to another level, let's use an example to explain and use the name of John Henry Smith. When John Henry Smith was born, his parents gave him the Christian name of John Henry and he shared the name of Smith with all the other members of his family. He was born a living, breathing being. When his birth certificate was sent to the Department of Commerce, it was registered and the government, because it was bankrupt, turned his a real name into a fiction. His new fictional name became John H. Smith or John H. Smith. His all-capital letters name was registered as a corporation at the Puerto Rico Department of State Corporations P.O. Box 3271, San Juan, Puerto Rico, 00904-3271, making him liable for taxes. He is now a fiction or artificial person, a non-living, non-breathing a person. It is a strawman, lat strominius homo, or a fiction, which government brings all its so-called charges against and never against the real person. Just like yours, his driver's license now reads John H. Smith or John H. Smith. When he signs a 1040 tax form, he dutifully fills out the form as John H. Smith and then signs his name under penalty of perjury, thereby admitting he will be responsible for all the taxes of John H. Smith, a fiction-in-law corporation. Look at your driver's license and see to whom it is issued. How can government use a form of our name and turn it into a fiction without our permission? They can't, we sign our name to all of their forms, which is purely voluntary permission in ignorance. In short, we do it to ourselves. However, for those who wish to control and own this fiction and prohibit government corporations, including the Internal Revenue Service from making so-called charges against it, a remedy is available to do this by executing a UCC-1 financing statement. John Henry Smith would simply do what government and the Internal Revenue Service does not do, file your UCC-1 financing statement into the commercial registry with the Secretary of State and claim everything related to John H. Smith or any derivative name, corporate fiction, I get you the birth certificate and social security card and number. The living, breathing, real person then owns and controls the fictitious entity, including all contracts related to the birth certificate and social security number. Thus, the real John H. Smith secures all rights, interests, and title in the fictitious entity. Now, the government and the Internal Revenue Service have to deal with John Henry Smith, but they cannot, because he is no longer subject to government control. Every living breathing person has both a social security card and an employer identification number. The Internal Revenue Service calls the social security number or taxpayer identification number. Never do they mention our employer identification number. What, you are not an employer, so you do not have an EIN. But wait. Yes, you do. We are all employers and every one of us has an EIN. 
If you apply for a new social security card, on the backside of the card written in red is your employer identification number. Government workers are all employees. Every single one of them. Government employees work for us, we are their employer. That is why, when you read the tax code to find the definition of employee, under Title 26 United States Code, at Section 3401, the term employee specifically includes officers and employees, whether elected or appointed, of the United States, a state, territory, or any other political subdivision thereof, or the District of Columbia, or any agency or instrumentality of any one or more of the foregoing. Every one of them are employee, the American people are the employer. Write to the Bureau of Vital Statistics in the capital of the state where you were born and request a copy of your birth certificate. Request a certified copy. Never mind that you have a copy right now. More likely than not it came from the county in which you were born. The number assigned to your birth certificate by the Vital Statistics Office is of primary importance when executing your UCCI financing statement. Check out our packet in our email in the description. Our goal is to assist and support you and your loved ones in any way we can. For more than three decades, we've been collecting valuable resources that can help you overcome any obstacles you may encounter. We're excited to provide you with access to the most up-to-date technology and research that have successfully helped numerous individuals in the past. We're confident that they can do the same for you. Please don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions or concerns. We highly recommend reviewing our information packet, which contains cutting-edge and proven knowledge. We believe that access to this information is important for everyone, and we encourage you to share it with your friends and family.